How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast today. Thanks so very much for joining us. I've been saying a couple of times this week that as you are hearing these broadcasts, I am personally inside the country of Cuba. I'm there during the daytime hours teaching some church leaders in a couple of seminars. But then in the evenings, I and some of the other pastors that are with me are out in various churches having the opportunity to preach the gospel. I love going to Cuba. Well, frankly, I just like to preach wherever they'll let me come and preach. But friend, would you be praying about the ministry of the gospel and training here this week. We do print gospel tracts there in the country of Cuba, and obviously Bible Tract Echoes is the radio arm of a gospel tract organization. Let me ask you, do you know what a gospel tract is? If you don't, I'm going to explain that. I've got a couple here in my hand, but my Bible is open today to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. On the rest of the week here, we're studying in the book of Titus, but this is Tract and Truth Tuesday, and in just a minute, we're going to share why we call it that. But let me ask this question. Have you ever heard of the town in Montana called Cut Bank? The Cut Bank is the name of the town. It is perched 4,000 feet above sea level, and it sits alongside the eastern slopes of the Rocky Mountains. It also has the reputation of being a real icebox of a town. You see, this town of about 3,000 people catches every Arctic front that slides along the Continental Divide. But it also catches every southwestern wind, which they call Chinooks, which means then that the town can, in a space of one to two two hours, have a temperature shift of as much as 50 degrees. Well, there in the town of Cut Bank, there is a florist. He has a greenhouse, and the plants he grows there are the basis of him being a success in business or an utter failure. So the florist, knowing of the potential temperature shifts, has rigged up a set of alarms in the greenhouse. If he didn't do that, if he didn't have the alarms, he would surely lose all the plants and lose his business. I say this story to you because, my believer friend, you and I are growing some plants. We call them often by the term, the fruit of the Spirit. And if these plants aren't protected, we're going to fail in our business of being like Christ and in the business of telling the gospel to the lost. So let me share with you some alarm systems that you and I can build into our lives to protect the fruit of the Spirit and strengthen our time of witnessing to the lost. Get your Bible out. Get something to jot some notes down, would you please? Let's strengthen our lives in gospel telling. I mentioned the words gospel tracts here a moment ago. That word tracts is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. A gospel tract is simply a short written format of God's plan of salvation. I would love to put into your hand a sample packet which contains about 42, 43 different gospel tracts. Each one tells the same gospel because there is only one way of salvation through Jesus Christ. But each of the gospel tracts comes at that gospel message from a little different vantage point. And so you're going to find some tracks in there that work good with all different kinds of people in different life situations. One of the tracks in there is the, this one entitled Transformed. Transformed, just one word title. It is a true story of the life testimony of a man named Don Price. Don Price was a criminal. He got caught committing a crime. He got shot in the process. He went to prison. And in prison, he came to know Jesus Christ as Savior. And when God saved his soul, God saved him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. Don Price, his life was transformed by the Spirit of God. He became a powerful preacher of the gospel. What a great, great tool. Just this week, a man who's involved in prison ministry asked for this track, or a number of them, that he can use with the men in the prison in the state of Ohio where he works. Transformed. This title, Transformed, is just one of the tracks in the sample packet that I want to give to you. Please, please be ready, pen and paper handy, because at the end of the broadcast, my announcer will make known to you our 
key ways of contacting us. If you just use one of those ways, the phone number, writing us, the website, whatever, give us your name and your telephone number and we'll send you that sample packet absolutely free of charge. Please let us do that. We've been handing out tracks free of charge for 80 years. 80 years. My beloved friend, we'll be glad to send you tracks. Please get ready when my announcer gives the information. If you can't stay to the end of the broadcast, then please just visit our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. You remember how to spell tracks, don't you? T-R-A-C-T-S. Well, that verse there out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, it's verse 19, which says this, For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? That's a question. Here's the answer. Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? Well, friend, one of the most asked questions I received goes like this. Mark, how can I be a more effective soul winner? It might be phrased a little different, but that's the question. But while we all know that only God can save a soul, believers are called to be the tellers of the gospel. We're the human tools God uses in his gospel program. We are ambassadors for Christ. Well, let me suggest some things here to help you in your spiritual walk. And these are kind of like an alarm system As we install these things day by day, they will act to protect the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, and they will also promote the activity of gospel telling. Jot them down. First of all, just by way of a basis here, please know that soul winning needs to be a life pattern for every believer. It's a life pattern. Evangelism is not one of the fruit of the Spirit. Rather, it's a command from the Savior. Here in 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 19 that I read, the believers there in the town of Thessalonica had been won to Christ, and for the most part, won through the work of the apostle Paul. They were his crown. Often people use this verse in talking about the soul winner's crown. Well, my friend, this is a crown that all believers can have, and I think want to have. You gain it by telling the gospel as a life pattern and watching God use you. So what are some of the alarm systems we can build into our lives? Well, first of all is this. Soul winning comes as a direct result of following Christ. Soul winning comes as a direct result of you and I following Christ. You remember Matthew chapter 4, verse 19? Jesus turned to those following him and said, Follow me and I will make you what? I will make you good prayer warriors? Well, that will happen. But he says, I will make you fishers of men. Well, the apostles learned how to tell the gospel by being around Jesus. You and I will learn the same way. We need to be around Jesus by being in the Word, by being around other soul winners, and by letting the Spirit of God control us. So as we're following Christ, one of the evidences that we're following Him is that we will be gospel tellers. Another alarm system is this, that soul winning is not a spiritual gift, as I said. It is a command. Now, a spiritual gifts, those are things that you and I can hone and have, have the Holy Spirit help develop. But commands are simply things that we just start obeying. You know Matthew 28, 18 through 20. We call it the Great Commission. But probably the verse that's clearest on this is Acts 1, 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit's come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. It's a natural flow, soul winning is, of us being a follower of Christ and having the Spirit of God in us. Here is another alarm system. Soul winning must be part of our daily prayer life. We need to be praying about being soul winners. Let me suggest three things to add to your prayer time each and every day. Number one is this. Ask God to give you a heart that is growing in its love for lost people. May I politely say that many a person sitting in a gospel preaching church, these people do know Christ as Savior. They give to missions, but they have a very small heart for the lost that they rub shoulders with. They don't like lost people. Let's ask God to give us a heart that is growing in his love for the lost. Another thing to pray about is this. Ask God to give us the grace, the enablement to tell the gospel. 
ask God, God, I need your your desire. I need the power to tell the gospel. Give me your grace to be a gospel teller. A third thing to pray about is this. Pray God's word back to God. And in this case, I'm talking about praying those verses on witnessing. Verses like Acts 1.8. Verses like, oh, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 20, which talks about you and I who know Christ being ambassadors for Christ. Memorize those verses, phrase those verses in your own words, and pray them back to God. Turn them into a prayer. Now, this kind of praying, friend, is in the will of God. Whatever we ask in the will of God, he's going to answer. Amen? These are prayers in the will of God. Plus, when we pray about God's grace, then when an opportunity for witnessing comes along, we ought to expect God's grace to help us to be there. I expect dying grace when it comes time for me to die, but I don't need dying grace today. But friend, I don't need while I'm here right now on the radio witnessing grace. But when the opportunity to witness comes along, I expect the grace to do it to be given to me by God. One more thing here in setting up an alarm system to be a soul winner, it's this. You need a plan. Soul winning needs a plan. Learn a plan. A learning a plan will strengthen your courage to tell the gospel. And then once you learn a plan, practice the plan. Practice it often with people who, who you know are already born again. Practice with people at your church. Practice with somebody that's saved at your place of work. Practice telling the gospel with people that, well, you trust because if you flub it up, they all will understand. Then there are Learn, you need to learn a plan. Some plans are one verse Bible plans, like Romans 6 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's a one verse Bible plan. Another one is John 3 36. Another one is Isaiah 53 6. But then also learn a multi verse plan, like the Romans Road. Now, there are books and there are seminars you can get and be a part of on soul winning. Your pastor ought to be able to train you. If he cannot, then suggest, go to him and suggest a soul winning conference at your church or that perhaps you and your pastor attend a soul winning seminar together and strengthen both of your hearts and lives, not only learning how to tell the gospel, but then being able to go back to your church and train others. Beloved, you and I who know Christ have been given a command. We need to have some alarm systems that God can set off when you and I are well, falling back and the temperature of our spiritual walk is going down. Alarm systems that will go off that will stir us on to get back and have hearts that are hot-hearted. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.